In November last year, an estimated 50,000 residents of Makweni petitioned President Uhuru Kenyatta to dissolve the county government, citing irreconcilable differences between Governor Kivutha Kibwana and the county assembly. Kibwana was the man under siege after the county assembly voted unanimously to impeach him. When the MPs came to the county trying to get me to be impeached, that didn't create very good blood. The petition to dissolve the county was approved by the Senate and subsequently by the Commission of Inquiry on the matter led by prominent lawyer Mohamed Nyaoga. But President Kenyatta differed with them, saying that the grounds presented were not sufficient to dissolve the county. This was like music to the ears of the county assembly, led by Speaker Stephen Gelu. Some of the leaders from Kambani and some from Makweni were supporting the dissolution. One would wonder... What advantages are they gaining when the county dissolves? Some Makweni residents, however, were disappointed that the president denied them their wish. Kibwana too felt let down but accepted the president's decision and indicated his willingness to reconcile with the county assembly. The overwhelming majority of the people of Makweni wanted the county government uh, to be dissolved because of the issues that uh, existed between the assembly and the executive. And uh, they were vindicated because uh, the commission uh, made findings uh, which supported the position of the people. Could the president's decision have been based on the need to consolidate support as he seeks re-election in 2017? What the MCS are saying, all of them, the 47, the, if the, the votes are voted today, all of them will vote for Uru Kenyatta. Because the leaders of Ukambani, I don't want to mention names, were saying, let us bury all these people, all of them in one day. But Uru said, I cannot bury my county. Nevertheless, the serenity of Water Town, the headquarters of Makweni County Government, belies the renewed rivalry between the governor and the speaker of the assembly. Some of my county assembly members... Uh, don't seem to be yet focused in terms of our sitting together so that we can debate these issues. I don't believe it is a governor saying that, that he blaming me on anything. In a situation where the assembly is being given money by the executive to go and oversee them, it will be difficult. It is a grandstanding that the county leaders say is derailing service delivery at a time that they should be consolidating their achievements with only two years to the next election. For devolution to work, I think the Makwene way is the way. Where, where you say that you will protect you know, public resources at whatever cost. What is required in Makweni now is not about dissolution, it's not about suspension, it's not about whether the governor is in government, whether the speaker is in government, whether the county reps are in, in office. It is about the developments that we've really missed for the last two to three years. Even with these differences, the county assembly boasts of a modern chamber, complete with offices for the speaker, his deputy, as well as chairpersons of various committees. At the same time, a new administration block is also under construction. As for the governor, his office is just a few meters away from the county assembly, which he shares with the county commissioner. But even more worrying for Kivutha is that of the 30 elected MCAs, his Mungano party only has 11 MCAs, compared to 13 for Waipa, which is a popular party in the region. The rest are spread out among all the other small parties, while the speaker was elected on a URP ticket. The residents say that they have nothing to show off from devolution other than the constant fights between Kibwana and Gelu, and now want the two and other leaders from the county to forego their personal differences for the sake of the county.